Uh, we have several interesting things happening today, so uh, can we begin by getting an approval of today's agenda? So moved. Second. Great. Uh, how about the minutes? Uh, any corrections, additions, or can we have them? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Great. Um, all right, so I'll go right into my chair and board report. Uh, I should preface this by saying that we haven't had our board briefings, committee meetings, or board meeting yet this month. Normally, Transit Riders Council happens after those, so uh, this would be a slightly different uh, chair's report due to that important fact. Um, but let me begin by saying that uh, ridership uh, appears to have plateaued to a certain degree in the 65% of pre-COVID area. Uh, you've no doubt seen all of the news coverage over the impending fiscal cliff. Uh, if certain things do not happen, uh, those certain things being sustainable, predictable funding source from the state, city, and, and or federal government, um, I think pretty much everybody has agreed that uh, massive service cuts or fare hikes are not the answer. They are self-defeating and drive even more people away from riding the system. Um, there is a big event today uh, happening outside city and state, uh, being held by Riders Alliance, um, and um, we testified. Well, we, we actually also reinvent Albany is a part. Yes, there, there yes. are a number of different groups. A number of different yeah. groups there. But reinvent Albany is taking the lead on it, not the. Yeah. Trans no, Riders actually, Alliance. Riders Alliance is taking the lead. Okay, I'm telling you what I was told. But it doesn't matter. They're both. Yes, pushing this thing. They're both pushing. Uh, and they don't have all the information. some action when the state legislature reconvenes. Uh, um, I will say also I'm, that. I'm sorry, you were saying. That we, well, even though we aren't able to be there, that we did contribute to the press release that they're talking about up the need for operating costs. Yes, absolutely. Okay, uh, here we go again. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah, I found out about this through my sources. I did not know that we were contributing. I will ask again, please, and I want this to go on the record, that when we, especially something as serious as this, which I am personally involved, but I think you are too, that before, I'm not saying we shouldn't have signed on to it, but it might have been helpful if you just let, don't even ask may I or may we, but just that we're doing something so we know what we are involved in. If you could do it just by a short email, even if it was only last night that you did it, just so I know, because I have been getting a number of phone calls about this through my other sources. So I will ask, I am pleading, and I, I would like that to go into the rec, into the minutes. I am pleading that you just inform us. If you don't have time to change it or anything else, just inform us what we are signing on to or what we are a part of or anything else. Please. I, 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 I'll just say um, as a blanket statement that we are have been and will continue to state the need for operating funding. They, and, oh, a general and overarching um, need for that the, that the or we're, we're basically saying what the MTA is saying that the fiscal cliff is coming. That there needs to be um, dedicated operating funding and revenue, uh, and that we um, join with our colleagues. That we join with the MTA with our colleagues in advocacy and elected officials in seeking a solution so that uh, that there is not um, the that there are additional alternatives um, to devastating fair hikes uh, unacceptable uh, service cuts and um, the, the the layoffs that we've seen that harm service Lisa, I am not against any of I think it is wonderful well, that we are going to say and we're going to continue to I say know, that. but no, sure. but just so that when there was an event like this, which was on the news, I, a number of elected officials called me about this. I can't help but that people keep on calling me about something that either the MTA is doing, the people associate me. So all I am asking 
so that when I got these calls, I could have said, yeah, we're a part of it. Oh, and we're, not, we're not a part of it because we're well, here. But we signed on to it. And, and we will continue to I know. That. I'm good. And I am and asking. to say that any time there's a call no, for our operating no, funds, so we're why, going to Why would that. it be so difficult to just send, and I'm asking for all of us, because a couple of other people sitting here, they're not as belligerent, maybe, I as I am. Oh, well, don't you I think would, I would second Trudy's suggestion that you let us know if there's something significant. Well, the significant is that there's say, a need for operating funds. No, 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 you don't understand, say, Lisa. I've been saying this for... But, Lisa, I'm, so have I, and so not, have we. Right, so I am asking you... It's not new. I know, the but there is a new... There is a new event today. This event did not occur before. There have been other events. There have been other events, and there will be other events. I know. So any time, I am asking if you can tell me any reason why just not saying, you, you said you didn't have time because you had a bounce by the chairs of the, of the three committees, and I understand that. But once Andrew, in this case, because it's the TRC, has signed off, is there any reason why you can't then just push the button and say, "This Andrew signed off on this"? I will let I will let Andrew um, just determine when. Andrew, uh, can you then any time that there uh, is Fine. anything at least? I don't know why Lisa doesn't want to do it. Uh, Judy, we have right now. You're looking at the staff. Yeah, we have very. We have yeah, staff. I know, but it's just pushing another button. Okay, Andrew, will well, you it then? Is a, it is short, ma'am. I'll do it. One line or well, you don't even have We're to do that many lines. Down, yeah. Just say we signed on. Okay, let me let me sure. continue because we we are. Ready. Okay, but I want your your point was made, Trudy. Thank you. Believe me. Uh, while I'm talking about ridership and the event taking place yeah. today at city and state and all of that, um, the deficit that is projected as of this moment uh, around 2025 is $2.5 billion. Uh, that is all, and I was speaking with, uh, with the chief financial officer today, uh, we agree that it's hard to take a ride without seeing people feeding the fare. Uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's mounting up, and I think we could cut the deficit if we, if we dealt with that, with that issue, and I think we would also deal with crime if we dealt with that issue. Um, as the chairman said, not all fare feeders are attacking people, but the ones that are, pretty much 99.999% of them didn't pay their fare. So we have to address these issues. And at this moment, I think um, I'm gonna. I would like to just diverge for a minute and ask you if you have any updates from the Fair Evasion Task Force before I go further. Sure. So I reached out yesterday, in fact, to uh, find out when uh, we can, when we, the panel, can anticipate seeing a draft of the report. Um, the initial time frame was mid-November, with a um, with a release sometime toward the end of November. But we haven't seen a draft yet, so I've asked when we'll see a draft and when they anticipate that there would be a, um, a, a, a that the subsequent release would be. I haven't heard back, but you know I think that it wouldn't be before Thanksgiving at this moment, Matt, right? I, I don't anticipate that. Right, right. Um, but you know the um, I don't anticipate it, but I haven't heard. That. So um, do you know if the report that you're referring to will have? Recommendations in it? Yes, there will definitely be recommendations. There'll be some of those recommendations that are, have already been implemented, including uh, putting some yeah, guards at some people yeah. at the at the service gates. Uh, I spoke to several, and you know, they said that they that they've already seen reductions in people trying to go through. Um, when are those folks who are assigned to those those unarmed folks that are assigned to the to the turnstiles in various locations? To the to the gates, to not the, gate. the turnstiles. Are they? assigned permanently to that location, or do they move around? Do you know that? I don't know. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a pilot program, and they're not at every station. There is a, uh, I think there are six or eight to start. They want to see what the, uh, what the and, and the end stations were um, determined through a variety of different um, So they're still um, working through that system. Okay. Um, so we should expect something by end of month, early December. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I, 
you don't want there to be an artificial deadline. Um, it's more important to get it right than just to get it out. Who's doing the draft? So there, uh, there, it's being done uh, both in-house, yeah. and uh, there are two co-chairs to the committee uh, as well who are on the panel. Um, the the um, partnership for um, New York is providing an assist to the MTA, and then uh, the, and, and then there are co-chairs who are from different uh, organizations that are looking at different aspects of the four uh, E's, essentially, that are being considered uh, environment, education, enforcement, and equity. So those are the four pillars that are being um, discussed and uh, with recommendations to follow. Andrew, a question. So before the formation of that panel, we as a body spoke about this issue of fair evasion and said ourselves, because it's our role to advise the authority, uh, that's our statutory role. And one of the things we said on the record was that the authority should explore um, rejiggering the entry points, whether it's through taller bearing uh, styles or new fork control systems. So, so, well, I think uh, that's going to be one of the... That's yeah. under environment. Yeah. So um, have they said, separate and apart from the task force, whether they're pursuing a pilot on this? Because, again, with um, Cubic getting ready for the next phase to replace machines, and they've already modified turnstiles, there's been a huge capital investment in the fare control areas, and it would cost a lot of money to modify things on a grand scale. Uh, but have they talked independently of this panel about what we brought to the forefront I have not heard of any right. further discussion. Um, I know that Randy, uh, you know, our Metro North Chair, right. um, sent a very uh, encompassing pho photographic series of the fair array at Secaucus Junction and how that is stopping any kind of fair evasion to the entire board. Um, I spoke to uh, the Chief Financial Officer, Kevin Willems, this morning, and he said, I saw that I got it, but I didn't open it yet. I said, please do and look at that. I think it would pay for itself. And he said he would look at it, and uh, we just have to do something. Right, and I think we need to be on record again, uh, separate and apart from that study. Uh, there, there, the, um, yeah. the, there is a consultant that's looking at the environmental side of things. Mm -hmm that is looking at a variety of different fair arrays that include um, the installation and the cost. They're looking at short-term, medium, and long-term right. um, opportunities. Because some, some, of, some of the recommendations that, that I've seen, I don't know if they're going to make it into reports, some of the potential uh, recommendations are like, why don't we think of that? Um, and they're easy. But that doesn't mean they're going to, that's going to make it into the final cut because some of them are longer term capital investments. That's right. And, but they are capital investments that will pay for themselves. I believe they will. Yeah. Right. So um, I think we yeah. need to get that conversation on track given the shaping of the capital program and the other issues that are, you know, that are down the pike with the, um, with the funding stream for the capital program. So I'm going to get into that uh, after Chris's question. Okay. Um, to answer the question regarding those guards, I have seen them in Brooklyn and Manhattan. And not, they've been moving around. So there was like one day I did see them at Powell Square. One day I did see them at uh, Kings Highway on the B and Q. But I, what I'm seeing is, is I'm seeing a lot of a lot of local precinct officers. In the in the middle where the conductor is, and if and the conductors have to make the announcement saying NYPD is on the, the platform if you need assistance, they will lead around. That's not the people that we're talking about. We're talking, talking about, about the, the unarmed guards. Yeah, the unarmed guards. As I said, they were. I did see them at 34th Street, Harold Square, and there were times I did see them a couple of times in Brooklyn. They used yeah, to but see my question was. Yeah. You don't know if you're seeing the same person. Are they assigned to one station and only that station, or are they rotated to other stations? They've got a, I, they may be rotating. I mean, well, I'm going to find out. Okay. 
did, didn't they announce that they were going to be at five stations and, and yeah, then they sent out Grand from and Grand Central, Times Square? Um, the, the higher fare evasion locations. Uh, but I've, yeah, I've I think there were five. The time. Um, obviously, but it's, a, it's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, but speaking about uh, financial issues and the fact that uh, we now, looking at the financial cliff, that blooming uh, need congestion pricing more than ever. I believe Trudy has an update on what she has heard about that yeah. very important program. So, Trudy, this is your time for that. Okay, I. It's not. It's not good news. Even though we have, again and again, I think we've gone on record when it first started and then whatever, and other groups and transportation groups, right now, one of the first things that Kathy, Governor Hochul, said when she was elected governor, and I've had conversations with her people about this, but I was really upset, and basically, she's not against it, but she doesn't, she feels that it has to be postponed because we don't know where the financing, you know, whether the, the numbers on the financing. Some of you have probably seen, heard her say this on the news or read it in the papers or whatever. But basically, and then she was asked a question at one of the press conferences, I don't remember which, well, does she, does she think it's going to happen like it was said that by, by uh, 2023? And she said, no, she doesn't <coughs> think so. So right now, while it hasn't been killed, and there is a lot of pressure from other elected officials, especially um, from other parts of the state, but especially Westchester and parts of Long Island and whatever, because they feel that, as well as well, New Jersey, we all know that New Jersey has totally, or if we don't know, New Jersey has totally True. come out. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, Andrew, can you not do the paper so much? Thanks so much. Okay, Trudy. Uh, that we all know about New Jersey, New Jersey and, and um, yeah, Governor um, Murphy. Murphy. Um, you know, have Josh come Josh out, have have come out at. Oh, and Josh Gottheimer has really been in the oh, lead. Yeah. The, in the federal lead of saying that he's going to do everything he can to kill it. But that's New Jersey. But now I am talking about our New York people and especially our new governor. Or not our new governor, but our actually newly elected governor, you know, um, who, and I, I know some of the people that have been talking to her also and why she's been doing this. So basically, as we look on this as a as a source of potential funding. Also, there seems to be some misunderstanding about any number of people, which amazes me that they still don't understand the difference between capital and operating. And what, no, I'm, you're laughing. Yeah. I mean, people who should know, know. better. Andrew, you, you know what I'm talking I about. Do. There, I, mean, I, was, I was at this conference this morning and um, this is the City and State Transportation Summit, and Somebody on the panel was talking about congestion pricing and talked in the next sentence about the reason that the MTA is in such a dire financial strait is because 70% of riders have returned. And I just want to you 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 everybody say something out loud. I, I, I oh could because it was, a, it was a, an MTA. Can I ask which of the panelists it was? So, no, which is a panel? I don't think she wants I, to say I, I don't want to say, oh, but no, it's no. somebody who, who knows better. But yeah. I will say Leroy Conry today said, uh, you know, there is obviously a lot has changed in the world, um, but we, um, he thinks that congestion pricing will happen. It's going to take over a year. But I'm telling you, Leroy Conry, unfortunately, does not have the, the influence that the governor of the state of New York does. Well, I think it still has to get the federal approval, but he said he, that there definitely needs to be a, a conversation about how it's going to get to the funding level well, that have been discussed because that the, I, I, everybody and their brother and sister. Well, but I'm telling you, though, that that it, the, the final decision, first of all, uh, I love Lee Roy Conry, and I 
you know, and he's really a good guy, but he does not have the kind of influence that Kathy has or some of the other people who have, who are now, they're not against it. I want to make this clear for the record. It's just that it's not going to happen in a reasonable period of time, certainly not by the end of 2023, and, you know, who knows, whatever. And I'm wondering, and we might want to discuss this, if for whatever reason, just because it is our, you know, we were one of the first who came, who spoke about this, who came out about this. I remember when we met with Sam Schwartz. I think Lisa was even before you were here, and Sam Schwartz brought it up to us, and, and I, and then he spoke to me about it any number of times. And I'm wondering, and if this has got to be the sense of this group, just to go on record again, you know, how important we think. And, Andrew, you, you know, in terms of the financial situation of the MTA, um, you know, that how important it is that we continue to consider congestion pricing or that congestion pricing has to be part of it. I don't know, what, however you want to word it, but just go on record once again, pushing uh, congestion pricing. Yeah. You and I are on the same page. Oh, my I God. Think, <laughs> I think that it's, you know, I, there's been a, a lot of conversation um, about now that the election's over. Um, about sending letters of support about congestion pricing and about re-emphasizing re the need and the and support for it. Um, in Bardo, the governor's deputy transportation secretary today said, um, you know, the governor has spoken out and said that this is the last generation that can do any, something about climate change um, and that congestion pricing is that something. And um, you know how many people have said they're opposed to it, but have not come up with another way to raise $15 right. yep. billion for the yep. $52 well, billion so dollar all capital I'm saying is, I'm, believe me. If you put a motion on the table to send a letter. I, I will put a motion. But I also want to make it clear, I, I, the governor has, is not, has not come out against this. She is just talking about slowing it up, and it's not going to happen as quickly as we thought it was. And <clears throat> some people, by the way, since you talk about climate change, some people are now saying, people who are against congestion pricing, that since one of the reasons to have it was, for, you know, for, for climate and, uh, and everything, but now that we have this great big bond issue for climate change that path that we maybe don't need I, this is another argument that I've heard you know which is ridiculous you and want I, to make, we all want make a motion I would make a motion that we once again go on record supporting uh, congestion <coughs> pricing and that it occur as quickly given all the other exigencies that it still occur as quickly as possible. And we'll mention, because and we'll mention how, why, so many reasons why this is important. To right, have. and especially in, in light of the financial crisis that the MTA is it's facing, fair. and this is an opportunity for, you know, not totally meeting the financial crisis, I but certainly. Okay. We'll, okay. we'll put something together and we'll get it to you. They, they, oh, yeah, there's a motion could. on the table. I think everybody I said it, I said it. I know it was seconded. Yeah, it was me. Uh, uh, any other discussion before we take a vote? Um, let me just certify. Who will this be going to? To the governor? leaders in the legislature and the governor? The governor. And the governor. And, the, and um, Andrew Stewart Cousins and Carl, Carl Hasey. Carl, Carl Hasey. I think it wouldn't do any harm to also send it to that, you know, a CDP Buddha judge. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, the set is in, in DOT. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, that's the uh, resolution. Uh, may we see a show of hands in support? I see no hands against Five. online. Five. 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 Uh, I'll make, uh, Scott, Scott, Scott is against. Okay. Uh, it unfairly impacts South Staten Island is actually. Okay, so I'm uh, Scott, does that refer the, well, let's finish the vote and then I have a question uh, for you. Julia and Karen voting in favor. I, I don't, I can't see a vote. Um, so you're Karen and Karen, can you either, can you indicate one way or another? Yes. Put it in the chat. Chat? Okay, well. 
put in the chat? Okay. Or can you say yes or no? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Six and Sicily. We can include something in there that talks about ensuring oh, that there's... Can you I... hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Voting for it. You can put something about ensuring that their mitigations are addressed, including impacts on um, that have been identified, including Staten Island. Absolutely. And ex exceptions, except exceptions. You know, we, we the discussion about exceptions is something that we you know want to participate in, but we feel so that there has to if be. If you add that, would Scott want to reconsider his uh, vote? Uh, Scott, would you reconsider your vote? that we oh. recognize the, 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 the concern of Staten Island? Well, if you put something in there, that's Staten Island. If they drive in through the Arizona Bridge, the Battery Tunnel, and go downtown, they're actually being triple tolled. Yeah, but without going into the details, just saying there be consideration of the situation of people who live or, and or work on Staten Island. No, I'm not going to change my vote, actually. All right, thank you. So the vote is seven to one. You know, when you talk about exemptions, uh, something to consider is that you have people who have to go to medical appointments and they may not be using accessoride, they may be using cabs. And I know like with the surcharge on cabs. So I'm just making sure that we're considering different groups of people that may still have to be driven into the city. And we can put it better if we can. In our letter, I just say but the, all of the all of the, especially medical ex exemptions and going to hospitals or anything because there are some hospitals that are literally I right on. I don't know how we're gonna. I don't know how that is gonna. So be. we just say all of the with all of the with all of the considerations and exemptions uh, that have been discussed that we we are aware that there have to be. I don't. I don't know that I would say all of the exemptions. Well, the that mobility one. review. Board is the traffic at a mobility host of review board is right, exactly. pay tolls on MTA or Port Authority bridges, which would help the folks on Staten Island, obviously. Yeah. Um, they're looking at if you're if you're driving and you're going through the battery or if you carry we've tunnels. We've written similar letters. And you're going yeah, to exit through the tunnel, but you don't get charged for being in. Yeah. Let us write. Let us write something. And get I'm just saying this let to Scott's benefit. Let us benefit to move on. See, to right. Scott's benefit to see if there was any. But Scott I guess not. Scott has told us how he voted. Okay. So. okay. Um, well, also, and, and as far as service goes, I was going home two days last week. They canceled two number two SIM two buses and a number and the SIM four bus. They, so the they canceled two SIM two buses and a four bus in a row. Yeah, but did they so say why? They have no drivers. Okay. So what's the point of me taking a bus and this congestion price? I can't drive them because you can't afford it. And you can't get home on time because uh, buses don't show up. So someone like from the South Shore of Staten Island, where do we stand? Yeah, it's, it's we're, a long trip. I, I, pay, I, we're paying $40 a day to get back and forth to the city with congestion pricing, or we're standing at a bus stop for 45 minutes waiting for a bus that might show up. Actually, Jess has that issue often going to Brooklyn. So Yeah. That's so, absolutely a problem that needs to be addressed. Yeah. I could be a so you want, add, you, want add in, you want to add an additional toll, you want to add an additional toll, but you're also not um, having proper service for Yada Burrows. Right, right. Yep. No, I, I don't think that's just to Staten Island. I would say anyone that doesn't have robust transit, you know. Yeah, I said, I said out, I said out of Burrows. So yeah, Queens, Staten Island, yeah, top of the Even Bronx. Even like Lisa said, I have an issue. I take the BM1. Sometimes it comes twice an hour as an express bus service, and that's not enough during mm -hmm. rush hour. And, and yeah. my son and my son lives in Bay Ridge and his he gets one or two buses canceled a day. The 28 and the 27, I take those sometimes when my BM1 doesn't come and I get picked up elsewhere and then I have to get a run home. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just talking about the concept without any specific, because everybody- This raises a separate issue of um, express bus service 
Oh, yeah, but that's something else. And need to ensure that there's sufficient Oh, yeah. Well, if, if something as trouble as this, you can't discuss, you can't discuss concept without, without specifics, actually. When you're talking about the, the frequency of express bus service, which might be hourly, and a driver or two are not appearing, that means a two- or three-hour service gap. That is not acceptable. Are I hear that. Are you making sure that you're putting money from congestion pricing into improving transit at all levels? Yes. Let yes, yes, yes. We have a speaker coming, so let me try to get through yeah, some I'm, more I'm, things. I'm sorry. I, Please. I didn't think this would take so long. Um, so um, I think most folks know that um, reduced fare is now available on Omni. Um, there are electronic signs in all stations now to alert you to that fact. If you go to Omni.info, it will tell you how to convert your account from MetroCard. They do suggest that you let your MetroCard <coughs> run down and out before uh, switching accounts. Um, I know some folks who have done it. It wasn't as, as easy as it sounds, unfortunately. But um, they, they were able to finally do it. Um, you probably heard in our earlier discussion the announcement uh, that you certainly hear if you're riding the trains now when there are police officers on a station. Uh, you know, if anyone has any issues, we have police officers at this station or on the platform. That is happening at every station that has them, and I'm hearing it more, and I'm seeing more police officers. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm seeing them in places that I didn't even expect I would. Um, hopefully, they're paying attention and uh, and they're having results because I know that people have said they feel more comfortable. Um, now, here's something I don't know. I'm sure other people, Trudy has even told me, but I've seen it on buses and subways. There are trains not appearing on the countdown clocks and sometimes not on apps, but they're showing up. <laughs> there are buses that are not appearing on the countdown clocks Department of Transportation has installed, but they're showing up. Um, but there are some that appear and don't show up. <laughs> right. Uh, but I have reported these to uh, to Demetrius and um, and to a Frank Anacaro, and uh, when I've given him or them the bus or train ID, in the case of Demetrius, uh, he reported it to somebody. They took the train. They checked the train at the end of the line, and it was not transmitting the way it should be, and it was taken out of service to have it repaired. So it is it is true. Some of these are not working. One of the, uh, one of the, on the at the conference this morning, they were talking about connectivity and the issues that happened in the tunnels and um, being able to communicate with people, but also that goes to trains, too. So I would like to upgrade the uh, communications within the tunnels that should improve, hopefully, um, the ability for conductors and operators to communicate, but also for the trains to communicate. Well, the okay, fact, but that, the fact that most trains are, are communicating and that just a few are not shows that the connectivity in the tunnels is basically fine. Andrew, it's that particular rolling stock hmm. that is. Yeah. Andrew, but what I have spoken to you about, even worse than the trains, are the buses. Yeah. And with yeah. the, what do you call the, the things on the street? The count, I guess they're countdown clocks they or are. so or whatever. And I also have something on my phone called bus time, yes. and uh, which is wonderful because it, it actually gives information that there's, you know, at what stop the bus is. But then it'll say on the way or the next away or three something. or yeah. something. Yeah. And then and it's three stops away. But when it comes, it just goes out of. And on the front, it says, out Not of service or next bus, please. We used to have uh, literally a rash of these. I mean, it was going constantly. Then it stopped for a while. Now it is worse than ever. I mean, the, the other day when I called you about this, I had had it happen on uh, 2nd Avenue and 80-something Street at, the, at a big, and it was a, it's an SBS stop also, and three buses in a row. So I, Demetrius is wonderful. They're well aware of the problem. He's one of my so friends. But are they, are they aware of this? They are that aware buses? that, yes, that a bus, when it's taken out of service, has to stop transmitting that it's coming to the countdown clock. Well, they put the sign on that says out of service. Yeah, but no, it has to be on the clock. Well, can't they also push a button to stop transmitting at the same time that they I don't push know the that button that I, says I, out of I'm service? I'm not sure the driver of the bus operator can do that. I will find out. That is very important. You know, but if, if there are buses that are running, they're full run, 
but simply not transmitting. This is just something that should be part of the checklist protocol Absolutely. before That's the bus goes out of the bar. Well, and it's I think Mark Troy said that, that uh, transmission should be tested at the beginning yeah. of every bus. And so should the destination yeah. sign, which it's is sometimes no not. So Richard has been trying desperately to say something. Oh, um, <laughs> well, okay, two things, but I'll just talk about the bus for now. Uh, in the MyMTA app, is there a way to like just input the bus stop number and see what buses are coming? Sort of. I, <laughs> on bus time. But there's something it's called bus, bus time, time. Yes. we can do it. You touch nearby stops, it gives you all, all the, everything you It'll need to know. It will show you on Yeah, time. yeah, right. But it's like, you know, I was like, oh, do I need three apps for, you know, bus time and this, 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 you know. Yeah, well, that's what I use. I now have three different apps because yeah. I actually get just text it to 611, you know, the, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. That, that's the quick 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 before our speech. No, this is going to be quick. The answer to that question, there is a pilot on that that was mentioned a few months ago on the M23 route. They were doing that pilot. We should have more information by the next month, and I'll get back to you on that. And adding to Trudy's question is, I have seen that in Brooklyn and Queens buses, but definitely heavier on the Queens, because a bus will come in, has his route, and even dispatcher says, can you please reset it? Your system. And it's not just that. It's also affecting the Omni uh, thing also because it'll say the bus route, but inside it'll say not in service. So there is some glitches going on, and I did put that into the, the Quest system on the MyMTF, and I have gotten some response. I, I've alerted Demetrius and Frank uh, yes. in the bus division about this, these issues. They are looking at it. Um, they are very well aware this is frustrating, and it's, it's you want you want people to come back to the system. You want you don't want to give them uh, false information that if this is a bus coming or a train coming. Or conversely, why isn't the countdown clock reading a train when an app is, but the clock is not? So I would say it is outside. So okay. We're ready. Uh, uh, yes. one, more. one more issue. Um, many of us, uh, especially Trudy, though, because of her position, have been getting complaints about the proposed 28th Street substation. Um, Trudy has had a really terrific talk with uh, with both Demetrius and somebody in construction and development. Trudy, uh, if you can do this. Uh, I'll, I'll try because I, I see that you, you, it was at the very tail end of the minutes from last time. If we have time before we adjourn today, after our guest speaker is here, I will, because it's not something that I can That's deal fine. with I very quickly. In, in I just want to also, but I want to make note, I want to make note that there is a wonderful person who I didn't even know existed. He's the deputy chief of staff, deputy director at the C&D, and if we have questions at C&D, this was suggested by Demetrius, so I just want to share it with everybody that we contact, and Sean Fitzpatrick, that's yes. his name, yes. Yes. has said that, you know, we can call him. He, he said, don't make it a, an absolute habit with everything. But uh, questions about various projects can go to him. So I just want I just want that to know on the record, because he was most helpful. And then if we can, as soon as our speaker is gone, can we bring this up immediately? Because it's, um, it's, okay. it's a definite situation. How are you? So, um, folks, um, I thought it was really a great idea to ask Jose, our weekend service star, to, uh, to come here because um, while ridership figures keep saying, you know, the middle of the week is busy, weekends are continually busy, and that's also the time when so much work is going on and uh, lots of geos all over the place, and so we thought it was very important to find out what we're doing to keep the service moving, uh, communicate with, with the ridership, and uh, hear plans for when the work might be done at some, some other time or uh, in another fashion so that riders, because Saturdays are really busy, as you've heard, we've broken several records. Marathon Sunday, we broke a record. So people are riding on weekends. They're using the system for discretionary travel, even if they're not commuting to work, which I think is a great sign. So we want them happy. and. Great to hear you, uh, Jose, and hear what, what you have to say. Well, thank you for having me. And um, we just want to figure out okay. if um, oh, are we screen, screen sharing or um, Sharon, are you screen sharing? All right, we'll 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 um, that does. Oh, 
Not a bad picture. Thank you. Who took well, that photograph? It's wonderful. Uh, I mean, you look well in person. Thank you. I appreciate that. I shaved today and I got cut here. So. <laughs> but um, thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I think uh, we're along the same lines. Obviously, uh, I see this role as a customer advocate. But uh, let me begin with... Uh, the uh, slide presentation that took me a few days to get together with some help from some friends. So the actual title of the job is Deputy Chief of Service Diversion and Coordination for the Department of Subways. And I see that as a customer advocate role uh, in what I'm doing. Can we? Right. Do we think so? Uh, uh, yeah. Grandkids can kick out of it. So um, I started here in 1993 as a conductor. Um, I was a train operator, train service supervisor. That kind of let the ground, uh, laid the groundwork, I should say, for uh, the foundation of being customer service oriented and being an engaged employee. Um, when I was in school car uh, as a conductor. Uh, the instructors really drilled down the fact that you should know your subway lines, you know where you're going. More importantly, make the proper announcements. We used to have a little blue book, hold it up, this, you know, and the announcements were there. Um, I think that um, that's important as a foundation in this position, in this role, as we look to uh, get uh, to the North Star of a 70% uh, customer satisfaction by uh, June of 2024 as uh, uh, the North Star of, of Dave, uh, from Richie's uh, North Star, I should say. Yeah, and then uh, in 2008, I went over to management and uh, became a manager on the four line and on the six line. Uh, I went on to work at system safety in this building, uh, do rail investigation when there's an incident, go out and, and look at what the causes of the incident uh, may be and uh, how we can fix it up and make it better. Then I went to the line superintendent on the 6th, and I worked at Capital Support and Planning, or I should say Subdivision C, where we get those work trains, flagging um, requests uh, ready for weekend work, uh, weekday week uh, work. So all the work that's going on the track, uh, we take care of. And then uh, I went back to a customer-focused strategy at the Rail Control Center, where I was a general superintendent overseeing some uh, stressful uh, incidents, um, you know, and how we got customers stuck in, on trains in between stations and the um, problems that that creates, right? We got to get those customers off the train. Do we have power? Do we not have power? Uh, how many people we have there? Do we have the right personnel to get those people off the train? And then now, where we are today as the uh, weekend czar or um, where we're looking to uh, advocate for the customer whether it's the internal customer or the external customer, uh, making sure they have everything that they need um, to get uh, around. So uh, we'll go a little into that on the next slide. Thank you. So the vision there is you know, to provide the best weekend service while we're updating the infrastructure with general orders, like Al Albert had mentioned. Okay. Andrew, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and creating satisfaction satisfying customer experience and employee experiences. Because at the end of the day, if my employees are not happy, uh, that's not going to be very good either. Uh, we want to get them off the train. Uh, you know, they have their layover, they have to have lunch, so on and so forth. So we got to make sure they're in good shape as well. Um, and that's what we're working on, and that's how I envision it. Uh, a customer advocate, uh, both internal and external. So this is the mission, uh, increase customer satisfaction for weekend service, uh, enhance the customer experience, uh, look at all the touch points that customers have when they enter the train station, the digital displays, the, uh, the um, signage that we put up uh, for general orders. Uh, we want to decrease their journey time. We're going to do that by looking at flagging. Uh, in some cases, the flagging against around the QBL and the um, seven line, it might be impacted by how we set up work zones, which are set up in a computer, and communicate to the train, and it slows down the train going through that. We can do a better job with some of that. 
uh, decreased wait time. Uh, a lot of times customers, you know, they're not going from Coney Island on the F to 179th Street all the time, so we want to make sure that wait time in between is, is shortened. Um, and we want to advocate for customer safety with our partners at NYPD. Or just right between Coney Island and Church Avenue, which is frequently <laughs> not what I need in that case, uh, we have some work to do, right? I mean, we're we, we, we having them, uh, we're pointing them towards the buses, right? Um, and some se seamless coordination between all the parties involved in general order planning, because there are a lot of groups that we plan with. Uh, we plan with MOW, C and D. Um, Maintenance of flags. Maintenance of way, which consists well, of uh, signals, way. track, uh, infrastructure, Capital and development, which has subcontractors who come to do work on, on site. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we communicate with them the needs of our customers and uh, obviously the needs that we, you know, we have to get our infrastructure uh, fixed. Uh, ensuring that we cle uh, clearly message us what we need, the service changes that we're putting out there for our customers, uh, the evaluation of general order processes. Um, you know, we don't want something to slip out where. Uh, maybe the, the uh, community board is not uh, aware and they can't get it over to their uh, uh, constituents. Uh, and we want to have a, a good working partnership with the Department of Buses and the DOT so when they do plan a route, it's not, uh, you know, uh, something else is going on. Some Jersey barriers are in the street. They have to cross over uh, to the median and then they block traffic. So those are the things that we consider. And obviously, our ongoing partnership with NYPD and advocates as yourself for the customer. I'll say before you move on. Yes. Um, some of those items on the left there. Yes. Um, something I've spoken to Dimitri and, and Rich about. Um, something that I think would really improve the weekend travel experience would be, and I think we're moving to it, but I don't know how what the timetable is. If the maps on the electronic screen show the service that was happening at that particular day at that particular time. Okay. Uh, so, you know, if, if service is diverted because of geos or whatever, it shows that on the map. As right, so you're getting see, your weekday service, you know. So if you go to Queensboro Plaza, you see a sign that says there's no 7 train. Uh, you want it on the actual map. Yes. It'll give you real-time condition on the, on the map. Maps. I think that would be amazing for folks. So sometimes when we do have a service disruption, we'll post that up on those digital displays. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's something we can discuss and we can look into it going forward. As long as Andrew broke in, I just have a very sim simplistic question, sure. which is you are the weekend czar. Right. Are holidays considered, because on most holidays we usually have weekend service. So, are you also do you also deal with holiday service, or how do you define that? So I would strictly say that it's on the weekend because on a holiday schedule, ridership might be a lot lower than usual, except in the case of Thanksgiving Day Parade, where we should see a lot of people on the west side of Manhattan, um, and services might be on a Saturday or Sunday schedule. But this pertains really to the amount of work that we are doing on the physical tracks or to the infrastructure. But usually, or very often, for various holidays, not just Thanksgiving, right. it will say weekend service or Saturday service on for whatever the, the holiday is. I mean, we, I think, uh, no, we didn't have, we might have even had it for Halloween, but I don't know, but recently, you know, Halloween we're... Day. Where yeah, but, but Jose is generally, making it pretty clear. Will you generally not do work, track work, et cetera, on a weekday holiday? In some cases, no, because contract, you know, contractors uh, are not going to pay uh, a premium to have their personnel come out. I, I think that's the, you know, the way I could answer it. Yeah, I, I want to I wanna, um, let you finish your presentation, okay. but let's also... Um, have our members ask questions first. And do you want to take questions as you go, or do you want to take them? Uh, well, I'm fine with, uh, you know, answering their questions as we go along. I'm okay, okay with that. Okay. Yeah, there's one thing it is important. I'm sorry, Stuart, because um, this oh, is, sorry, Stuart. Um, <laughs> you know, accessibility, you know, as, I, as I'm a member of ACTA, and I know Edith was also had this complaint a lot, when you do track work, there's no accessibility reroute. 
I know ACTA has been setting it up when we had the 7th Avenue shut and we had accessibility reroutes for those customers who are using walkers, wheelchairs, any mobile device, including the seniors. We don't see, I don't see that that much on the 7 line. I don't see that that much. I do see it on the Q line because at least that was a little easy, but when accessibility is affecting a certain line, a major chunk like the F line, it does affect how customers are supposed to know how to connect where there's no shuttle bus. They have to connect two buses to finally get to Coney Island or the signage is not there for accessible reroutes. So there's something we definitely need to do. We need to work on that. Yeah, and I know Q has been working on this. I have been working on it, but today I just don't see it on that geo. I mean, there are signs that say this affects accessibility. Yeah, right, but it doesn't give you the reroute. Basically going back to what you were saying, right, yeah. where we needed to uh, message that better at that location. Stuart? Yeah, I just wasn't clear with what the answer is to Trudy's question. So. Do you oversee uh, non-weekend uh, holidays? As I'm you going are? to say that I'm, a, I'm part of that discussion. Okay. I am part of that discussion. Right. Um, but, I, you know, again, part of the thing might be that they might not be doing work on that holiday. Right. Right? So it, it, it comes down to the times when they are physically doing work when we're having a lot of diversions and... I might be called on to, if they say th Thursday, Thanksgiving, we're going to have a lot of work, Jose. I will come out for that. Right. Absolutely. That'll be but, the, but is, is it just about work or also the schedule? Because no, no, this, what I was talking about is when, and you see these posted on, on you know, on pieces, on buses and in subway stations, that because of the, we'll say Thanksgiving, since that's coming up next, yeah. but whatever, be of course the President's Day, you know. The, this will, this bus or this train will be operating on a weekend schedule. Correct. So I'm not talking about work now being done, but just uh, the schedule being changed. Schedule gets changed because contractually, conductors and train operators might be able to get a holiday off. So, right. for example, I'm going to use Thanksgiving. When they select for Thanksgiving, we might be give 100 conductors and train operators the day off to be with their loved ones, and they might all take that day off, so we go, uh, go to a weekend schedule. Might be a Saturday schedule, might be a Sunday schedule. They, on the other, on the flip side, in terms of construction, they might not have much construction, but because contractors are not coming out, they're gonna be with their families. So it depends on the uh, holiday. But you would be looped in if there were construction yes. events on a weekday, I get, a, I get a package about yeah. six weeks out to, right. to review for every day, uh, not only the weekend. Oh, great. So oh. I'm clear on that. So great. to wrap this discussion up, sure. yeah. some of Thanksgiving being a glaring inception, some of these holidays are adjacent to a weekend. So, you know, it's a Monday. They'll extend it. They'll extend it. They'll, they'll, get, they'll be able to get more work done. So we won't have, a, you know, just a two-day, uh, you know, they, might, they won't be doing just two days. They'll do a 72-hour general order. Correct. Okay. okay. I, I know that you have a question as well, Ms. Judge. Let's get to the next slide, and then um, let's continue with the questions. I, I know I have a question as well. Okay. So uh, this is a, a, a location I went to at Kings Highway on the queue. We had a bus diversion there, uh, and the buses were going in three different areas. It was very confusing for myself, not only the customer. Mm -hmm. So I asked, can we put a sign telling customers exactly where those buses will be? As you can see, the before picture, no sign. The after picture, we have those uh, uh, signs pointing our customers where those buses are. So I'm going to locations looking for something like this where we can do a better job at. And this is one example. So over here, I, on the D line, I went up to the concourse and I went to every train station looking for signage. The signage was good in most places. One or two was missing. But here we have a digital display where there's nothing being displayed. <laughs> I called up 
And I said, I need that change to say, customers, there is no de-service working at this station. Please walk over to the four line. And you can't see it in my photo there too well, but at least we got some verbiage to that point where we told the customer. I must have been Norwood. No, 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 we were actually pretty good. Yeah. Because by the time I got there, that sign was already running. Okay. But that was a hundred. That was 167. That was 174th and 175th. Uh -huh. So by the time I got there, they were playing all the uh, all the signs were working. Next slide. Thank you. And here's something else that I, I want to work at. Just similar to my foundation as an employee at New York City Transit, we need to get back to our basics by having more engagement from our customers support with our employees and our customers. So if I tell my uh, employees who I see on the platform, if you see somebody that needs some help, just go over there and ask them, hey, can I help you out? Take a map. Have a map handy with you. Direct them to where the uh, elevators might be when they're looking for one. Make sure you give them an exact location. If you have to ride with them on the train, so be it. Sometimes that, uh, that interaction it's a lot better than, you know, just standing there and saying, uh, you know, hey, I'm here, come talk to me. Sometimes we have to reach out to the uh, customers as well. Oh, here you see some employees with some tools that we uh, need to utilize. Uh, when I was at Queensboro Plaza the other day, I had a young uh, conductor using his voice, propelling his voice. He must have been from Brooklyn. Uh, he, was getting, he was getting his voice propelled, telling customers what was going on. No seven, go downstairs, take the N to go to Manhattan. So we went to the office and got him a bullhorn. This isn't the, uh, the employee, by the way, but this is the photo that I have. So that they can utilize that bullhorn to better communicate with customers uh, in mass, right? Then the conductor to the right, he's using his flashlight and a whistle to direct the customer, uh, the conductor on the train when to close the doors, okay? So that helps that conductor close the doors, move the train through the area, and therefore uh, get the next train in. And you might see that at Lexington and 53rd Street now a little bit more with the escalators being out. Okay, so here, this is the sign that most of you see on the weekend and during the weekdays or weeknights. Uh, basically, train not service at the station, and these are, you can take the ACF. That was a, a short GO we had at Grand Street where we had to do some maintenance on the bridge. Um, also, we had an outage on the one a few weeks ago, um, and uh -huh. I wanted them to di have directions to the uh, Bowling Green Station. Uh -huh. So we had those way signing signs put up, and we're looking to do that in a lot of locations where we might not have a physical uh, body, uh, someone there to help us out. So in this case, we'll put those way signing signs, a uh, way wayfinding signs, I should say, and we we tear them down after the general order. Session. Um, so I know that Mr. X has been patiently holding his question. Um, I, I had a question as well. And, I, yeah, and then I know Tootie and Christopher and Stewart have questions. Or Stewart and um, Stewart and Christopher and Tootie. Okay, I'll go okay. last. Okay. But Deborah said she was last. Uh, However, Mr. X. That's okay. But this doesn't apply to yes, you apply to channel Okay. Uh, truncated D train above Yankee Stadium. You know, down low, they can't switch sides there. Maybe you should truncate 145th Street. You can turn around low level on the middle track, switch sides there. You have some trains on the 207th Street. That's common sense. Okay. You just found truncated the J train at Hughes Street. First of all, you know, down on that wheelchair accessible is in between Flushing and Marciana, which are, okay? And from what I saw, the J train did be run between Yushi and Marciana, but just didn't pick up heavy passengers. So, excuse me, 
case the can't run a course with toilet front bridge, it should terminate at Montana. You can't terminate there, it should terminate at Motor Avenue or Forward Junction. It's that simple. We said Forward Junction, if you're Forward Junction to Toy Street, you can switch sides. Between Motor Avenue, Motor Monster, they can switch sides. Okay? If you need to stop trunking it at Euclid and Crush Street, if anything, you should truncate it for Forward Junction because it's more ridership, we can turn to the line. And you can have a question, they're going to turn to the P13 bus. They're, they're a definite. Okay, so use your common sense. And, and also, wait for more lines. If you close the express tracks, why can't the ENF trains run express on local tracks? Why do you have to run local when you're at the M&R train, particularly our train on weekends? Right. Why do you have to make it? Why not, not you, but Jan? Why does it to make me confused? So far, he has thought about making. Oh, no, sometimes I'd like to, like to share with him. Okay, if the two train can't run between Franklin and Flatbush Avenue, you should run between Franklin and New Line Avenue. Not between Franklin and Schenectady at Utica Avenue. You know what happens if you turn me to Utica Avenue? The riders will swim on the downtown, uptown side. The riders will swim. The four and the four train, all the discovered before the rewrite of two train. Okay? And also, one weekend ago, the three and four trains were suspended below Peter Cabin. As you know, there's this one layup track between there and Southern Avenue. Both trains can't access it simultaneously. So why not let the four train run right above Peter Cabin, suspend the three train above Chamber Street, because you already got the two train? Because the Chamber Street can switch sides. That's 14th Street. That's 42nd Street. Which side? Okay. Stop giving up the but also A train. This 314.92 Saturday. It was suspended below between East 57th Street and Woodhaven Boulevard, Barbara Boulevard. 30 years of pure hell. Enough already. Okay. Enough. How many times have you suspended the A train between the two points a weekend? 30 years, last 30 years of pure hell. Talk about this, okay? Mm-hmm. Talk about this. Thank you. Interesting point. Yes, yes of course. Uh, so do you want to happen to know why U Street was chosen as the last one? Do you know what? The Marcy Avenue? I can't say that I, I know, but it might have something to do with the power limits uh, of where they were working. They might have wanted the limits extended into Marcy. Maybe they were doing some switch renewal because you do have a switch at Mark. And the train was relaying there, so maybe that wasn't the point. Maybe it was something else. But they have separate mezzanine, uh, meaning uh, it's, not a, it's an odd one, but uh, I, I, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I have, I have but maybe, okay. maybe quick. So um, thank you. This is this is great. And I, I've already seen the improvements in the signs. I'm, I'm on the seven line. Um, so I took it last weekend. Right. And I was going to Jamaica to do the Grand Central uh, Madison ex- you know, experiment. Okay. So I was going to Jamaica, so I had to do the train. The train runs every 17 minutes. So as a alternative to the 7 train, um, I, I think that the that the trains, if there's no 7, the alternatives to the 7 should be running more frequently. That's correct. 17 minutes is a lot. Um, and it, mm-hmm. and it, should, it seemed like that was sort of the standard, and that in, on the other weekends, I tried to stay local, but this wasn't an option. And um, I think increasing frequency on the all lines makes, makes it easier for people to travel. So uh, the 17-minute headway is rather odd, because they usually try to give you at least six trains an hour, and they were running on the local, is that correct? No, they were going express. They were going express, so the R was on the local? The, uh, I was the Okay, on my train. Uh, so I would have to look at that and see if there was anything, if you could give me some more information as to what time that occurred, because 17 minutes is uh, an odd headway. Um, it was, it was pretty much in both directions. Did you did you see on the countdown clock that the succeeding trains were also 17 there was minutes? There nothing on the countdown clock except wow. the first train. I, I, I was, when I was looking at um, all the different apps, right. the time, when I was planning my trip, it said seven, E-trains run every 17 minutes. All right, I'll, I'll definitely look into that. Okay. All right, if I can get back to you on it. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right. Question. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, how do you get information about buses that are being used as part of these diversions? How How are you getting that information in real time? So we have an app in house where we can actually track our shuttle buses, 
and we'll see where there's a bottleneck. Uh, and the Department of Buses looks at that to see where their buses are. What I like to do is go to where the actual bus is, the terminal for the bus for that diversion. Uh, let's use the two and the three, uh, or excuse me, the, the three and the four this weekend at Utica Avenue. Uh, we were looking at the buses. We go to the bus dispatcher. He or she will tell us we're on a five-minute headway. We have no open jobs. But when we went along the route, they had some diversions. They were doing some work. The bus had to go another way. That bus dispatcher then has to account for that in his headway. But the app does give us some real-time information. So it's an internal tool. Yes, it is. Okay. And a sub-question, do you play a role, or your office, in whether buses would be needed for these uh, so events? It's, 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 we, I, mean, I am part of the discussion. Right. Uh, in, the, in talking about the F line, uh, that has come up a few times. Which, which is what I was going to We, have resource, we them, yeah. do have resource issues, right? Uh, just like um, many of you know, uh, we're not up to capacity uh, in terms of our resources. And that might have something to do with why we don't have buses. We, we're telling our customers to go to the uh, local buses to get from Church Avenue to Stillwater in that case. Right. right, I'm at the end of the line. So when they first started the resignaling project, um, they had buses. Now it's go to the nearest, take a local bus to the nearest bus station. Or the, or the queue. Or, well, or the, right, or a nearby line, right. Okay, but you are in those conversations. Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. I, th you are, I want to go back to some of the photos and the slides sure. that you showed us. No, it's okay. You don't have to. I okay. just want to refer to them. Um, and I think it's wonderful, the customer, the interaction with, I still call them riders, not customers. They <laughs> go, going way back. <laughs> when we call them riders. But anyway, uh, the interaction using something like a bullhorn to get attention, the flashlight for the but. What you're saying, well, I guess my question is, is that why is that just for weekends? Why isn't that all the time? It should be all the time. And so are we, you doing anything about suggesting that it be all the time? Or can we do something about suggesting? Because some of the things that you've come up with, while they may sound like simple common sense, it hasn't happened before. And I, in looking at them, as you, as you, you know, went over them, I said, wow. You know, it's about time. So, are you talking to the powers that be, or are you? Uh, Again, it's a resource issue. Um, sometimes I find myself on the platform, and I'm the one with the bullhorn and telling people where to go. Seventy uh, Second Street after the marathon. No, I no, there. no. I'm, I'm aware of that. But, but on the weekdays, yeah. on the weekdays, yeah. we don't have those resources. I think conductor. Uh, you have two, I we, we, we had two hundred. We had two hundred and twenty, and now we're down to twenty. Wow. Well, so, well, but is there any way of even for the twenty or for whatever, just making that uh, as, as a you know stand SLP standard operating procedure where possible? They, they would use a bullhorn. I'm pretty sure that if I go to Lexington and Fifty Third Street, they have them there. Okay. You'll see the gentleman with uh, the flashlight and the whistle. Though you'll see them there working uh, with their blue vest. All right. How about Grand Central? Grand Central, they used to be there. Yeah, I, I, I was there. I'm not even talking about that. Yeah. You have one slide Russia. where it's just an employee seeing somebody in difficulty and just offering them, you know, can I help you? That, whoever is there, should do that. It it doesn't happen as often enough. Sometimes we don't, we don't have that employee there to do that. No, I understand that, but I'm just saying, look, I'm giving you a compliment. Thank you. I think what you're doing is wonderful, and I just ask if maybe it can be suggested where and when possible that the same procedures go on weekdays also. I think we'll definitely take that into consideration and, and bring it up to the powers that Well, if there's anything that we can do to help Thank make you. that happen, because I think Gotta it's really wonderful what you're doing. Thank you. Got to get the manpower. Chris. Yeah. Uh, as you you were showing the picture of the King, King's Highway, there was one little problem that the shuttle buses are, I'm raising my voice so you can hear me, 
Um, the shuttle bus, when it comes, when it goes local a little bit, then it goes express after King's Highway, has to arrive on King's Highway and on the B82 bus going towards uh, Pasek Park Bound because Avenue R was closed. Right. And then you had someone else had an issue because the shuttle bus, they didn't make an announcement saying the next stop is Pasek Park. Instead, he went on another route somewhere along Ocean Avenue and threw everyone off. And was that the first weekend, by the way? It was, it was the, I think it was the third weekend. Third weekend. Our last because, weekend. Yeah, because the gentleman behind me is one of them. It's right behind me. Right. I had that issue. But the problem is, is you have those people out there at King's County East 16th and Quentin. The problem is, is you have the sign that says, if you're going to Pasek Park, you're not expressed to Pasek Park. It's not in the right spot because the bus cannot <sighs> make a right turn R with the construction, if they're doing the left. Yes. Yeah. And there was, they weren't getting those shuttle buses. They told them to stay on, when you're on Ocean Avenue, make a left on King, stay on King, and then drop them off at the 82 bus stop, which is under the train, and then make continue to Coney Island Avenue and shoot up to Pontiac Park. Going the other way is fine, but I'm glad to see there are accessible signages <laughs> on the Quincy because that's a really extra heavy line. But what I'm seeing is also is, as Mr. X has mentioned, and Andrew, we did bring this up last time, was still an issue. And there is a getting a worse issue. It's Flushing Avenue on the J is closed for construction. No, and that J ends a huge street. That's it. They're stuck. They're trapped. There is no accessible unless they take, unless they have to go all the way back to Jamaica, Queens. That kind of geo is, not helping, but that jet. That Myrtle, Myrtle Avenue is successful, isn't it? No. Myrtle no, Avenue, no. why close? No. If the M was running, yeah, the M. if the M is running, you're thinking the M and us, M and L. That's the Myrtle uh, White Court. Well, if the J's not going over the bridge, neither is the M. Yes, <laughs> and what I'm saying is, is it should be they had they should have the J and at that at that Marcy because you're thinking of accessible customers who need to get off. Yes, and transfer for the B39 bus because now we have a worse issue there because Flushing Elevator, which is handily representing the Wolf Hall Hospital, and forgive me if I'm saying the hospital name wrong, it's a very challenging for them all. And it's, you know, the ridership on the buses or if we have shuttle buses is causing headaches and concerns. And service plan, uh, when it comes back around, we'll definitely look at that. It's interesting to see why that is. You yeah. Be very curious. Deborah had a question. Yes. Uh, I have to go ahead and acknowledge I am his mother. I'm kind of hurt by what you said that your boy should come and help me when you have accessible reroutes. I'm sorry? When you brought up that you want your employees to go help the people with disabilities, I have never seen that. I, I Not will. once at all. And I have a walker and I have used a wheelchair. I have never been offered help or assistance. To get on the shuttle bus, we had to let two or three go before, and then, God forbid, we have to tell them, you can put the ramp up, give me the ramp. Oh, no, 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 that's an insult. I don't know how many times we've reported it. Or the other part I love is that I want to try to sit in the correct accessible seat as the driver is being bombarded. Instead of helping or seeing that we, I can sit in a single seat so if a wheelchair comes on, I give them that seat. You think it's a crime. People are bringing on, their, on, the, on those shuttles, they're bringing those biggest shopping carts. Yesterday, a lady kicked my wheels in and it hurt my leg because she said I was in her way. I was. The late, two people that came by me, their big shopping carts, didn't say to me, they said, don't worry, we can get by. The abused people like myself take care on these buses <coughs> as well as the trains. It's horrendous. And nobody comes to our defense. Oh, I'm sorry. I've had a few. I'll be honest. The, the police have helped me out. And on the Long Island River, I have Long Island Cares assist me. But I very rarely get treated the way I deserve to be treated as a paying customer. Correct. And I don't, I don't, it, it, that hurts when you're saying they, they, they should be helping. They don't see that I get on the train correctly. And you know how many times the pumps are broken? And I mean that I have to tip this walker up high when I'm in the wheelchair. He'd have to tip me up in such a way that I nearly passed out from dizziness. So I would appreciate that you also want to have better signage just for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Do not end any of your routes at an inaccessible. If you can't do that, then have a bus riding up below on the street for persons like myself. I'm not supposed to climb up or down the stairs anymore. 
Do I miss some of that? Of course I miss my freedom. But I want to live with quality and not lose my leg. So I'd appreciate if you also train your full step on and maybe you need to also take them fix them up. Be trained. What is it like to have to use a walker or a wheelchair or a cane or crutches? And see how we feel. I have had, yes, there are drivers that are at night and they right. help me, but it's not as much as it should be. And you I need never. to think of us. Thank I'm you. sure you experienced that. So we we'll work to do that, to get better at that. You can call, ask him, he'll tell you how many things have happened. The diminution of staff members from 200 something to 20, was that due to COVID or retirement uh, or what? I think uh, COVID had a lot to do with COVID. That, um, what Deborah is saying is exactly uh, what I mean. Right. That it shouldn't. That assisting people and all the rest should not just be on the weekends. It should be SLP, standard operating procedure, and anything that you can do and that we can do to to assist you in making that happen. Thank you. Okay. Jason had a, had a point um, that he raised before that said uh, at certain stops uh, on the 7 line where there is a GO to have a different languages. I would say that's, if, if that's you... That's actually a great if, point. Yes. Yeah. It's, you know, even if it's if the signs are, you know, small, but if you know we have a, a code, we're looking at something along the lines of a QR code. Yeah, so a QR code. That's in, you know, yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, and any. Yeah. Anybody? Any other members have? Definitely, and his team dealt with some low-hanging fruit, but there are some improvements that have applicability to regular weekday service. And I think, as an institution, a body, we should be on record telling you know the authority that they should be looking into that. Um, he does he does interact with with others in these decisions, but getting just the linkages it's, it's important. And the thing that you were talking about, I think about why it doesn't end at North because they have separate fare control areas where the other one has a common mezzanine where you could switch from side to side. You know, regardless I know what you're saying, but yeah, uh, because I think that inconveniences more people than it conveniences. Well, I, but I think that's the rationale. Um, it could be work happening between Hughes and Marcy, like he did. Who knows? But it's worth looking into. But yeah, it's something because there's a switch there. They could do a switch from one to the other there. It was very beneficial. His, his chat was very... No, no, Enlightening and benefit. Yeah, but we shouldn't lose that momentum of saying and being on the record yeah. that you can send a letter to President Davey saying how much we enjoyed this and some of the things that emanated from this discussion are and list them. And the other and that we hope that they will consider doing it yeah. all the time. And the other the other piece though that's part of another larger question about and we saw this when we went to the rail control center about integration of the total operation between bus services and trains, whether it's a diversion or uh, a temporary stoppage. So they do have other internal tools that weren't shared with us before that I think we need to explore with other guests in terms of how that information is being monitored in real time. Uh, well, just remember, we, we had asked as a board on record that we wanted people embedded in the rail control center from the bus team, if it happened, it's happening the other way at the bus control center. But if there are these tools, and I know Trudy has spoken ad nauseum of issues <laughs> on the Lexington line you have to where there's no clear information when you're getting, you know, at the station about taking a bus or what bus is. But if they have other tools that are monitoring movements, I think it's helpful. And, and, and they, no, you have to see how they share that information. It allows them to monitor the, the, the bus diversions. Right. So. Is this being utilized by personnel during the weekday to yeah. deal with real-time 
real-time events as opposed to planned diversions and, and campuses right. isn't, but we should add. Well, if we're going to write something, not even add, yeah. just say we hope, you know, make it in a positive yeah, way. Yeah. We hope that... He didn't know about it. ...that he has talked about going no, on on the weekend will also, where possible, where possible, be employed uh, during the week. You know, make, let's make it in a positive way for... My God, I, I I don't know what I had. There's something in this water. <laughs> I didn't know it would work that fast. <laughs> um, so okay. No, Andrew, can I just, because let's, I have to be out of here, too. This. I know, you're going to be No, but here. you were going to call on me before. Uh, please. Go ahead. If I may. I, I am going to take, I, however, we need to do this, so I am going to just take prerogative at the, oh, okay. 15 minutes for this. Just to get through it. So uh, I, I will be no more than five minutes. If, if you all look at the minutes from last time, I, I brought up, and of course it was at the bitter end and I had to get out, uh, about the 28th Street substation, which people had spoken at, at about at the last board meeting. And then I was approached by, um, by somebody who, is, who I sit on another board with about, about the situation at the, of to having the uh, proposed 28th Street MTA substation. And the reason that this is a matter of concern is that there is a NORC at Penn South, NORC, National Occurring Retirement Community, at, at Penn South, and the people who, who are there do, don't like the idea of a substation being built right in the middle of, of their development, in the middle of their NORC. Um, I, um, power. I did oh. substation. You know, oh, there there is sub power. power. Yes, let's call the substation. Anyway, anyway, um, and I suggested that you know we write a letter or something. I, I, but we don't have to because uh, thanks to uh, Demetrius, one of my new favorite people, and who referred me to said that even though this this was power for the subways, that he, and this is something of interest that I never knew, that subways, the subways division, does not get involved with power or the power stations or anything else until they are actually in operation. That where they go, uh, when they're being built or anything else, he has nothing to do with. I mean, he talks, they all talk to each other, but they have nothing to do with it. Anyway, he referred me over to uh, C and D, which I explained, <laughs> is construction and development. And um, because this is an issue that was not only raised at the board meetings but, and, and all these phone calls to me, but uh, it turns out that some, I don't know if any of you were, uh, were um, I was going to say accosted, but whatever, you know, on, on this issue. So to make a long story short, um, I spoke to, um, he suggested I speak to Jamie Torres, and then, as I said, um, but he thought after he spoke to Jamie that this is something that's under the jurisdiction of, of Jamie's deputy, whose name is Sean Fitzpatrick. I had a wonderful conversation with Sean Fitzpatrick, and to cut right to the chase, the reason they did a, first of all, this isn't going to happen for another three years. <laughs> and right now, so, you know, everybody getting hysterical. Uh, about it, it's not going to be in operation for another three years, and the, and the building and the construction is not even going to start, maybe for another year or so. But basically, there has never been the power station that they keep on referring to, the, the people in this north keep on referring to, which is uh, the 31st Street substation. This is a substation that has not been in operation for about 30 years. It's just kind of <coughs> sitting there, like an antique or whatever. And so when they say, why is it being taken away and changed, right now the 8th Avenue line with the A, C, and E, which these substations are, are being serviced by two, sub, by two um, substations, one at 14th Street, one at 50th Street. And 28th Street, 31st, is right in the middle, so, okay. But the reason that they have a need for this new substation at 28th Street is because of C Andrew's, Andrew's favorite thing, CBTC, okay? You got it. 
I got it right, communication-based train control. I finally got the alphabet. All good. Yeah. And anyway, the project of building this 28th Street substation, because CBTC is not in operation yet on the 8th Avenue line. And Angela, you probably know when and if it's going to be, not but close. not for a while. Not it's for a while. Not, not for no. a while. So uh, basically, this is something, and we all know that that our constituents and the communities get hysterical. They hear something, and they blow it into something that is totally, OK. Uh, but the reason that this site was chosen is because even though the people who live in Penn South think that 28th Street is part of their development, it's actually not. It's a, but they always look, when they're putting in a new, smaller construction project, that it be someplace that is not in the middle of something. And here, 28th Street is a wide street. It's a, it's a right of way. And so that it doesn't need, it doesn't disturb anything that is already there. And as this, uh, you, you might all want to know this, especially people, other people dealing with the Second Avenue subway, that I would then remember that this is something that we went through in building the substation for the Second Avenue subway for the for the three stations that uh, were being built for that, and he. So this is just a bit of information that we should keep as the Second Avenue subway. And by the way, parenthetically, the work on the Second Avenue subway, because of the financial situation that Andrew talked about, has slowed down considerably. And right now, there's just some preliminary work still being done. But phase two of the Second Avenue subway is kind of, uh, what's a better, good way to put it, Please. slow down. <laughs> phase down. Phase two is phase down. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to, if there is no need for us to write a letter and um, anything else. As, as Andrew said, he was going to talk to Demetrius, but he just spoke to Demetrius, and Demetrius said, have him call me direct, and that's how I got to this wonderful new resource for all of us, Sean Fitch, and I just wanted to go Thank on record you, how helpful he was. But if you hear about these various, you know, community, what what happens? And this is a clear case of that somebody said, "Ah, oh, they're going to build, they're going to disrupt everything," and it went wild. And at the last board meeting, for the, um, I know you were there, that you heard all of these people. I think there were three or four people who got up and yeah. said, "I'm part of the 28th Street." What do they call them? I read the, I read the project names. Stop 28th. Oh, they have a name now. Right. They call themselves the Stop 28th Street Substation Coalition. So they already the formed the coalition. Mm -hmm. But that's all. I just wanted to, you know, give a report on this and say there's really nothing. That, for once, something that I said we got to get involved. We got to do. We don't. Awesome. So Andrew, on the record, thank you for talking to Demetrius, getting me in touch with him, and and all of that. Thanks Sometimes. for the info. Thank you. Um, Kate, did you have your hand up? Did you want to say something on this? No. Okay. Uh, Jason, do you want to say something on this topic? Oh, no, Andrew. I'm here at the Paul Sorty board meeting, and I want to report in some breaking news that I just uh, literally received from the Paul Sorty, and is that they are going to raise the fares on the air train. Uh, starting in January of next year from eight dollars to eight twenty five and in uh today's board meeting they are are uh, they are talking about uh, next year's uh budget that they might uh even uh cause more negative impact on New Yorkers thank you Jason. Uh, just a quick question. Did they mention a bad bearing control? You're in a bad you're in a bad spot you're right in a bad now. Spot. Okay. Um, let's go on to this very important topic, because this is gonna reflect how we meet in the future. Um, want me to give these out? Uh, well people have received it by email, of course. Right. So um, I'll just provide uh, an overview. So um, with the um, 
changes to the open meetings law because of the uh, the expiration of emergency order 11. Um, the, uh, the open meeting law requirement is that, uh, as you saw from the from the draft that I sent, um, that public bodies, of which we are four, the New York City Transit Riders Council is one, Long Island Railroad Commuter Council and Metro North uh, Railroad Commuter Council, each one, and PCAC is one, um, have to come up with a resolution and regulations for uh, how they will meet publicly. Um, this language that was uh, was shared is essentially um, taken from uh, suggestions from the Committee on Open Government. So the references to the different uh, chapters and verses of um, of um, the the, um, the laws and the regulations are cited um, from their uh, review and, and um, research. So essentially, um, we, not just we, but a public body is required to have a decorum, must meet in person, uh, in a publicly accessible location. Every member could meet in a publicly accessible location individually, but you have to say where you are. Um, as long as there is a in-person quorum, and again, it doesn't have to be in one place, be in your office as long as it's publicly accessible. You could be in the library as long as it's publicly accessible. You could be at the Q train as long as it's publicly accessible. <laughs> we could meet in the zoo as long as it's publicly accessible and it's noticed. Um, and then as long as there is sufficient people you know, that who are in a publicly accessible locations, location or locations, then the remainder of the um, committee could be who is not, not, not count toward the quorum, but could participate. If we do not have in person uh, a sufficient number of people who are in publicly accessible locations, then we will not have a quorum. What do they define publicly accessible? You have to give the address and welcome the public. So if, I, if I'm in my apartment and I say, but anybody who wants to join me in my apartment, come on over. Yep, that's publicly accessible. Then it becomes publicly accessible. If you, your camera has to be on if you're going to be remote. Um, well, however, but the only, but you can't just say I'm going to be at home. It must be under a couple of different conditions. One is extraordinary circumstances. So. Um, your, your medical condition that you were that you were dealing with would pre, would prevent you from traveling. Um, that would be uh, a, an extraordinary circumstance. Um, so then I don't have to invite everybody else to come over. Then well. you would not come toward a quorum if you were uh, if we didn't have a, a quorum of people. Uh, the other if, if it would, everybody would have to have um, a, a you know you would right if you were just going to be remote, as if you weren't in a public location, then you would have to be in an extraordinary circumstance. But if you were, if you said, yes, my home is now a publicly accessible location, and anybody who wanted to go could go, that counts as a public location. Um, it would have to be on the written notice that's publicized, and your screen and camera would have to be turned on at all times. And that goes the same for anybody uh, who is in a publicly accessible location. Because New York City remains under a state of emergency, the, um, there is still a provision to allow for remote meeting uh, as an extraordinary circumstance. But that we have no idea when that's going to go away. Do we have to? You know, there could be other health emergencies in the future. Would we right. need to have a clause that says that, um, you know, we would follow this, this, and this, and also uh, allow for remote uh, attendance based on state or city? Uh, it, it, that's 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 have, you have that sense? Yes, I, that's, I that's in there right. about um, that may be either in the, resolu in the resolution or the regulations okay. about um, city or county, this county, or state. Uh, states of emergency. Okay. 
Um, so we, anybody who is remote needs to keep their camera on at all times and uh, have their name properly full and fully um, uh, uh, stated and shown. And um, you can only vote if you're remote if we have an in-person forum and publicly accessible locations. Uh, and if you are remote, it would need to be, if you're not at a publicly accessible location, because of extraordinary circumstances. And that doesn't include vacation. So, there is one question that I just thought of something and just bring bring it up upstate. What happens if you're trapped in your house uh, because due to the snowstorm and because of the inquiry high, because the governor can say, you're in a state of emergency. You can't. It's a state of emergency. Yes. And that state of emergency says we cannot leave. So is that still That's the state of emergency. Yes. But we're, you're not helpful. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm just saying because sometimes be. New York City can have something that's perfect. Right. So that, that counts as a state of emergency. It's global warming in America. Right. I second that. Um, so we, um, ev everything else continues. Um, the, the minutes need to be posted. Uh, our, the videos need to be, the meetings need to be live streamed and posted. Okay. Um, and uh, public participation um, continues to see. So am I correct in assuming that the Metro North Commuter Council voted on this yesterday? Yes. We would vote on it today. Long Island Railroad has voted on it. Has voted on it as yes. well as the PCAC as a whole entity will vote on it in December? December 8th, correct. And, and they will go into effect when? Check. Uh, on or after January 1st for each of the councils. Now, wouldn't you need to have some advance notice from a member to know what they're doing to have a sense of whether you'd be able to achieve the forum? Oh, yes, absolutely. And, we're right. going to need an RSVP. Um, and we're going to, and if, if, if and we How long in advance? If, well, we'll, 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 as far as possible. Um, you know, understanding that extraordinary circumstances arise. Um, so that, you know, extraordinary circumstances, emergencies, um, and, and things and stuff and things like that. Um, if, you know, we, we in, um, on another council have somebody who has made plans to travel for three months, um, but is, you know, going to hold, is going to go to a publicly accessible location in another state and make and, and provide that evidence. So, if you are, you know, in another location, like another state, uh, I've said I volunteered together. Yeah. Listen, how far in advance do you have to get this, you know, before turning your apartment into a publicly accessible? Location? When we put out the agenda. If we don't have an in-person quorum as defined in this document, we can still meet, but just take no action. No agendas. Are are um are approved. No minutes are approved. Nothing is approved. None of the actions that vote. we took. Have but you can speak and meet and talk about things. You can, but it doesn't count. It doesn't count towards it's gathering. I mean, there's no there's no. It doesn't um, count as a, as a as a as a. I mean, a it's, it's a meeting. gathering, but it's not yeah. an official meeting. Official. Okay, it's not. Right. <laughs> so does that mean if it's not? An official meeting, as you just stated, that minutes don't have to be. Minutes cannot be approved. Minutes, no, no, no. Still be taken. They would still be taken, though. We, we, that's what we do. So what would you, how would you? How would that be termed? Termed of it? Would this be a non-meeting minutes? Minutes of the gathering of the <laughs> New York City gathering. You, right. you have to wave it. Well, then at the next legal PRC reunion. Well, but then what about at the next meeting? If everything. If you, you do have a, a legally approved quorum, can you then refer back to the non-meeting and say we now want to uh, in, include everything that went on at the meeting that didn't happen? You'd have to bring it up. You'd have to say I'd like to a you know, motion to approve the agenda yes. from the um, pre, from Gathering. the pre date yes. meeting. Uh, we'd like to approve the minutes of the. So we can do meeting. that after the fact. Yes. Do that now if there's not a quorum. Um, anyone like to speak to this uh, proposal? 
It's, um, I mean, I, I've spent a lot of time on the phone to the Committee on Open Government, who's been unbelievably helpful um, and really wonderful. And they've been bombarded as well. And there's lots of for and fors and ifs and therefores and for wherefore are thous. Um, but they've been really very forthcoming and, and, and terrific about answering questions. Those are already questions. Is, this any, is there any reason why out of, it seems like out of the blue this came up? So it, it, um, it, Kara brought it to our attention. I play with Kara, no. Uh, Kara brought it, raised it because community boards were finding themselves in a pickle um, because the, the, uh, the, mm -hmm. what did you say? Yeah, because the, in October, the governor lifted the COVID emergency order, mm -hmm. the executive order that allowed remote meetings, um, and that lifted a whole bunch of other COVID, um, regulations and requirements, but with that, the open meetings law goes back into effect. And so this well, reverts to... That's for us before. Well, well, so this was, this was the, the provisions that are included here were in the budget that was passed in 2022, oh. but they weren't put into effect because of the emergency order that was in effect. Then let me back up a little bit. Why would they... But since it hadn't happened before, why were these put into effect in the budget of 2022? Well, why all of a sudden it seems, because we've been having not just PCAC or, or anything, but every advisory council to a, to a city or state agency or whatever, or the, you know, I've been on a couple, of, as we all have been on some of these boards. Well, as you recall, there was a, uh, a time where it was going to be where if you were going to meet by Zoom, even during the middle of the pandemic, you were going to have to give your your home address as a location where people could go before the legisl that legislation was changed. So that it doesn't have to be your, you know, your home. So you can be in any publicly accessible location. You can be in a library, you can be at a hot dog stand, you can be at the Q train, um, at the zoo. Well, it's probably outside the zoo because that requires an admission fee. Um, so there were changes to the provision and adaptations, but and in fact, our friends at Reinvent Albany worked to uh, address, uh, to improve some of the harsher aspects of what this initially looked like, but didn't come out with everything. So they came out with some improvements to what had been proposed, but still. Um, you know, there are some of these changes that um, everybody is sort of grappling with. I mean, Lisa, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to let everybody know, every New York State agency that begins with a no has to follow these bylaws too. So that includes OPWDD, OMH, OASIS, and the list goes on, and we all are meeting with legal departments for our state agency, but at the same time we have to meet with the governor's office too, so everybody is going through this now. Karen has a question. Karen, you're muted. Okay, so, you know, you know, I guess when I signed up to be a part of this, it was flexible, not realizing that it was going to be required to be in person. So, I would say that in the winter months, I'm going to be an uncertain because it's going to be weather permitting. And when I say weather permitting, where I live in Queens, if it snows, I have to shovel. You know what I mean? Like there's certain conditions <laughs> that may make it harder for me to get in. Um, and being it's a two hour meeting, um, you know, I may be able to be there in person sometimes, but sometimes I may have to be um in an office sometime right now I've been working from home sometimes I do come into the office it just depends so I'm not quite sure how to navigate that I don't want to impact the productivity and the ability for us to move important you know agenda items forward uh, I just feel that and this is not on you like no one explained to me that this would be a requirement that we needed to be in person a majority of the time. So that's something I guess I'm going to have to wrestle with. Um, well, I don't think anybody knew that this was coming. 
Um, but why don't why don't you, why don't we talk offline? Um, and if anybody has these issues, and this is if you have seven people in the room, the meeting is. Yes, right. If we have right, if it's the majority of the people in the room. Yeah. So if we still have the members, members. Of, the, of the members, not the visitors, not yeah. Yeah. the members. Right. Yeah. So if we, if we have a quorum today. Um, we tend to have a quorum in person. Um, I, you know, I, bad weather is certainly something that we're going to have to manage. And, and so in some instances, we're going to be able to, uh, we're going to be comforted and covered by the state of emergency that still exists in New York City um, to allow for uh, remote meetings. Uh, but I just don't know when that's going to happen. Nobody does. That's up to the mayor. And I guess the other thing is, what's going to be done moving forward, just reflecting how working conditions are changed, how people are operating, and that the world is becoming more remote in some aspects. So I just, I know government sometimes lags behind, um, but that seems to be the way things are going. So I feel like there has to be some reform or some allowances for that aspect. I think that there will be, um, you know, once once the legislature returns to session, I think that there will be a lot of agencies um, and public bodies that are grappling with how to deal with this, and that there will be further discussions. And there's certainly questions that we can raise and requests that we can make. Thank you. That's something that you all want. Who resign? Yeah, don't resign. Over my dead body. <laughs> no deaths, no deaths. Oh, thank you. Carl. Carl, you are muted. Yes, okay. Does that, does anything change for like I'm not an appointed member, I'm just like sort of a guest. I get the emails, I come. Does that as far as uh other other people are concerned that aren't actually appointed members of the New York City Transit uh, Council, does any of this apply to them? And like, does my comments later on uh, can be accepted or not? Is this going to change anything for those people that aren't actually appointed members of the board? No, because okay. you're visitors. No, but everything says the public. Visitors are still the same. Everything's the same with that. The members of the right. public. Correct. Okay. This, this really only affects. Okay. Okay. This really only affects having a quorum. And to have a quorum, you have to have people in public places, like members in locations that are public places. Yes. Public yes. places being accessible to the public and announced beforehand. Yes. Whether it is your apartment, the zoo, outside the zoo, <laughs> the coup tray, or wherever. Right? Okay. Right. I mean, you know, ideally we're in the same room at the same time just because it makes it easier to have these conversations. but. Um, uh, there are circumstances, you know, we have uh, some members who are, who work in the Bronx, who um, will, it would be much easier to perhaps find a public location there. Um, can I make a motion, if there's no more discussion? Uh, okay, I, I move, yeah. I move that we accept the, uh, a whole, all the guidelines and everything that Lisa has drawn up, Lisa and Carol, or wherever it came from, it's fun, and that we accept Good them God. as written and as presented. Second. Are uh, we ready to vote? Yeah. All those, uh, in, yeah, I just, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Karen, did you? Ka uh, Harris, did yes. Karen Cicely, was that a yes? Yes, that would be that was just for you, yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Again, we will be the re discussing this at PCAC in December. If you didn't December enjoy it, if you didn't enjoy this one, you can have <laughs> well, it again. PCAC has to even though all of the three councils have approved it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't hold for PCAC. It's, it's considered a separate, a separate organization, yeah. even though it's been made up of three councils. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
because theoretically, each council could have their own their own rules or could have a variation of the same thing. On one hand, I would affect TPA, and that would be bizarre. You have to change the, the words here. But as all three have now approved. Um, Hopefully, it'd be much. Yeah, easier. you can't imagine it would be. No, but I think we have the largest challenge because we meet monthly. We do. They don't. Yeah. Right. They don't. don't? No, I don't. No, yes, no, they, they do. Except for certain times of the year. They meet um, eight months. Yeah. Oh. It's Karen again. You know, I was just thinking, like, we could almost make a, make a pact, like, for the people who live closer, like, if they make a commitment, more or less, that they could be there in, like, the, the more weather-prone months, like January, February, you know, like that. And then, like, other times when people are on vacation, like, in the spring or summer, like, I make a commitment. Like, I don't know. I'm just putting that out there, but. Um, I think those are the only restrictions, really, for me, has become the weather moving forward. Cold snow weather. Well, I don't know that we're going to have any at this year. Hopefully not. <laughs> not Hopefully it won't be so it. massive that you can't make right. it count. <laughs> um, all right. Um, we are very close to our uh, end of meeting time. Does anyone have any pressing issues they want to raise? Or we will call for adjournment. So moved. So moved. Thank you all, and we will see you. See you in December. And we will see you in December 8th, I guess. That's the right. PCAC. Sure. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Thank Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. Same to you. Happy holidays.